I'd like to welcome everybody this morning to our time of worship. It's so good to be back. And uh, we know we have to do a lot of things different. And, and a lot of people aren't comfortable with that yet, we see. But it's so good to be here. And I want to welcome everybody and suck through this whole trying time. I thought before we do anything else today, what I'd like to do is, uh, before Terry says some words, is what's going on across our nation that to take time to pray about all the protests that have just, it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing that's going on. One bad thing has brought about some other bad things. So let's pray for our nation, for its leaders, for uh, the different states, what's going on. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning on behalf of our nation and all this terrible stuff that is going on. Father, for the looting, the protests that have turned into terrible things, we know that there's been an injustice done, no doubt. But two wrongs don't make a right. And we know there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of malice that is built up and resentment, race tensions, prejudices, bigotry. And Father, so many things that need to be dealt with. And we ask your grace by the power of the Holy Spirit to work in this whole situation from Minneapolis all across this United States. We pray your spirit to touch hearts, for leadership to know what to do and to handle things appropriately, and for the people. We ask your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to get Terry to say a few words as our board chair. I want to tell you she has done a tremendous job through this whole thing. And because uh, we haven't met since March the 15th. And Terry has just done a great job to lead us. We've had meetings behind the scenes, and it's been a lot of work. But uh, Terry, we're so grateful for uh, God has brought you to this time. And we're so grateful. Thank you. It's been a great year. Good morning. Um, I'm going to read this when I wrote it down because I always think afterwards, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that, and I didn't do it. So hopefully the thoughts will come out of my mouth like I put them down on paper. Um, I just want to take this time to welcome everyone to our service this morning. We're very excited to be back in our sanctuary for the first time in 10 weeks. Amen. This has been a tough... Amen. This has been a tough decision to know when to open our doors again. And I want you to know that the decision was made prayerfully and carefully. We have done things that were recommended to us and hopefully that will make you feel safe. We will continue to look for new ways to add to our service as the situation evolves. I know that everyone has made the decision for their families as to when it is the best time to return to in-person service. And whatever that decision is, I want you to know that we respect that. I also pray that everyone respects the decisions of the people who have returned to our sanctuary. Even though our sanctuary has been closed, our ministry hasn't. We've always strived to serve Jesus Christ, and we, has, we have continued to serve him. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone who made this happen by their generous giving of their finances, prayers, the food pantry, phone calls, and notes of encouragement. Bible studies, Sunday school, Sunday service has continued through our technology. Thank you to everyone who has helped behind the scenes with our technology, with our website, with our Zoom meetings, with our prayer chain, with our conference calls. There are so many things that go unnoticed but have to be done, like the grass mowing, the bills being paid, the maintenance, the cleaning of the sanctuary, and I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, I know Carolyn came with us Friday and she wiped down the pews for us this morning. Just little things that nobody really thinks about that get done. And I want to thank everybody who's done that. I want to thank God for keeping us connected, even when we are far apart. I want to thank my family for putting up with all my craziness during this time. My friends for coming to my rescue. Our church family for being patient with us. The elders for 
all their hard work that they put into the decisions, and Pastor Rick for guiding us through all this time. I hope you've seen the general reminders that were put out through your flock leaders, the websites, and prayer chain. I also want to encourage everyone to um, join the prayer chain because that's how we get a lot of our information out, especially during this time. I know that these times are different from what we may normally do to worship, but maybe they give us a new perspective on how special worship is to us. Maybe you might even like the change of scenery where you're sitting today in a new location. Thank you for cooperation, for your cooperation with all the guidelines. Just a few quick reminders. At the end of the service, we'll dismiss by rows, and do go directly to your car that so we can get everyone out of church in a timely manner. I don't think we're going to have that problem this morning. <laughs> Um, I know it's been hard not to socialize with people that you haven't seen in a long time, but we just want to be respectful of everybody's faces. Um, may God bless you all. May Jesus Christ be served through this. Amen. 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 Thanks, Terry. Thank you. And you know, uh, many, we have enjoyed the Saturday nights with the Shipes and the Meadows. Yes. Yes. So the Saturday night crazy worship. So uh, we want to thank you all for what you've done for the last nine, ten weeks. And uh, so it's just been good. You've seen the scripture that's up here today that uh, I was glad. I, I don't know of any other verse that's any better today to start worship than Psalms 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet, where are your feet right now? They're standing within thy gates, old Jerusalem. So it's so good to be here. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for the way that you watched over us and led us to this point today. And be with all those that are in their homes and, and all of our shut-in. We just thank you that we have the privilege and the church is open that we can worship you freely and publicly. Let your Holy Spirit be upon us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. service today with um, Battle of the Republic and everything will be up on the screen.
Jesus said, for where two or three, you may be seated, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I. There am I, right in our midst here today, just to know, by faith, we can't see Jesus, we maybe don't feel him, but that doesn't make any difference. Jesus said, wherever two or three gather in my name, there I am in our midst. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we do come together in your holy name to give you praise, glory, and honor. And Father, it is so good to be back. We just thank you for this privilege Father, to be here in your house here today with brothers and sisters in Christ and to worship you publicly and freely. We thank you, Father, that, that these doors have been opened. We do it by faith. We step out in faith that you are the sovereign God. And we are so grateful to be here. And we thank you. And we pray your blessing on our gathering today and your divine protection. And for all those at home that will be watching this later, we pray that you will bless them as well. And we thank you, Father. Father, we pray for those that are traveling and for vacations. We pray protection and blessings and to bring back each safely. Father, we pray for all those that are hurting. Father, you know every need that's represented in our families and our neighborhoods. Father, we just lift each and every one up to you because you have no limitations. You have no boundaries. You are the mighty God. So we lift up those that are hurting, those that are lonely, those that are grieving, those that are going through struggles, we ask that you would just gird each up with whatever grace is needed. Because, Father, we all need your grace. Let there be a great refreshment in every heart by your grace. Let there be an empowering of the Holy Spirit, personally and collectively, in all of our hearts and our homes. And, Father, we pray that you would fill us each with your great love. And, Father, that our love in Christ will compel us that when we go out of these doors, it will show, and, Father, how we live. We praise you for your compassion. We praise you for your gracious. We praise you, Father, that you abound in love and that you forgive sin and wickedness. Lord, as you look over our lives and our nation, forgive us. We pray the blood of Jesus over every aspect of our lives and the work of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us of our sins, personally and nationally. And Father, let there be a great cleansing. Let there be a move of your Holy Spirit across this nation and across our lives and in our churches and our ministries. Father, that, that you will be in the rightful place of America again. Father, we pray for our leaders. Father, for godly wisdom and discernment. And Father, that they will know what to do and handle, whether it's the pandemic or the protest or the injustice. Father, we lift it all up to you in the name and the blood of Jesus for your great grace all across this nation and in Virginia. Father, we pray and thank you for all the medical staff and all the different facilities where they work and all that you've watched over and protected. And Father, we all know people that are in quarantine right now, and we pray your grace for them and their families. Father, for those that have lost loved ones through this, we pray that you would comfort and strengthen. And Father, help us to live by faith and not by fear, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for caregivers. Father, we have some in our church that are just being such a blessing to so many people, and we thank you for that. And Father, be with all of our elderly. Father, we pray specifically for Carrie and, and Brandon and for the little baby to come at the right time for each to be healthy and strong. And we thank you for that. Thank you for Red Herndon, just turned a year old yesterday. Many prayers being answered, and we thank you for him so much. And Margaret Brooks, who just turned 87 on Friday. Father, there's so many reasons we have to celebrate. We thank you for the gift of life. Lord, whatever grace is needed in every life, we pray for it. We thank you that you're the God of all grace. In Jesus' name, our Lord, amen. 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 Yeah, keep Carrie uh, in prayer. Uh, she told me the other day in a text that if she doesn't have the baby by Tuesday, uh, she's going in and they're going to take it. And I, get, I don't know how else to say it. Sorry. And uh, I remember when they put my wife on uh, that, that thing, Potosa. Boy, we had a baby real quick. Today, I, I just think a very appropriate scripture today is from uh, Psalms 84, longing for the courts of God. And uh, if you would read and follow along with me, Psalms 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart 
and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home in the swallow, a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house that are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The autumn rain also covers it with pools, and they go from strength to strength till each appears before you in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look on your shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in thy courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is upright or blameless. Lord Almighty, Almighty God, blessed is the person who trusts in you. You know, I think if we learned anything through this thing, there's been a lot that I think that good has come out of this whole pandemic, uh, if you can say it that way, is that, uh, Caroline, I know that you made this point to me many times in my office, that we have spent more family time together, most of us, than ever before, and have enjoyed a lot of family times, and yet I know uh, some haven't been able to do that. Um, but the one thing that has really hit me that I think what we do as a people is that we take anything or people or things for granted when we have them all the time. Do you think that's safe to say? That we can just take for granted people and the many things in life that are so important to us and we're just going along and everything's going well and we just take everything for granted, everyone, until something or someone is taken away. I want to tell you, our last corporate worship was March 22nd, 10 weeks ago, as Terry said. And I can only tell you, from my heart as a pastor, that one of the saddest things that, that I have struggled with is to come into this sanctuary five days a week and nobody's here. There's no worship. There's no preaching or teaching of the word in Sunday school, Bible studies. No corporate getting together to study the word. No preaching and teaching except through videos, empty pews. You don't know how many times I've walked through this sanctuary and said, Lord, this is sad. It grieves my heart. I understand why we couldn't. And I think it was wise. But it's still sad in my heart. <coughs> and I think, how many times did we just get up on Sunday morning and run into worship and no big deal, we do it all the time. And maybe God was trying to say something to us that this is nothing to take for granted. To be able to come together and to enjoy. Slide number three. I want to say, and I want you to understand what I'm about to say. Praise God for social media. I mean, how many of us have enjoyed the Saturday nights with praise and worship with the Shipes and the Metas? We look forward to it for, for all the video and that we've been able to do to get God's word out. I mean, people are seeing it all over, and it's just great. I mean, praise God for that with the Zoom Bible classes, with the meetings, with the phone conference calls. I mean, social media has been great. What we've been able to do, we've been able to continue to do God's work. On Thursdays we have, and I mean Sundays, and all the different things we've been able to do, it's been great. But the other morning in my prayer time, here's what God really put on my heart, that social media should never take the place or displace our gathering together to worship the Lord together. Amen. It should never. Praise God for it. So please understand. But it should never take the place of the gathered church and what we're able to do as we gather here today, where two or three come together in the name of Jesus. Slide number four. Because when you get to the heart of the Psalms, the Psalms is the praise book, if you would, 
of, of Israel and their worship. And many of the Psalms were written as Israel, they would come from their homes. We were driving over in Israel a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, a couple years ago, and they were telling us when you're going up and down those mountains to Jerusalem, the pilgrims, the Jewish pilgrims, they would gather together in the streets in those old dusty roads and they would walk wherever it was from Bethany, Galilee, wherever, all the way up to Jerusalem, going to the house of God. And there was great excitement as they were going up for their great feast to worship the Lord, to remember Passover, to celebrate whatever it was that they were celebrating and what God had done for them. And so when you get to Psalms 122, you can get the heart of it. It says, I rejoice. I was happy. I was happy with those who said to me, hey, it's time to go to the church. It's time to go to that place of worship. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of God, to the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates. I want to tell you one of the hardest things, one of the longest days for a pastor is a Sunday when you don't go to church. Oh my golly, I had to reinvent Sunday. I don't know how else to tell you. Because my day has been so filled with getting up and your prayer time and getting ready and, and mentally preparing yourself for the message. And, and you've been studying all week, but it's, it's, it's there. And to stay at home. <laughs> it's great to be back. Amen. And you 20 are going to get it. No, I'm just kidding. Now, it's slide number five. I'm just kidding. Now, look what Jesus said. We've already know this. Why do we get together? I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates in Jerusalem. Now, think about this. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, where they're gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Now, we know as believers that the Holy Spirit, once you've come to Christ, you've accepted him, you've been born again, you and I have been indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Amen? We have been indwelt. So wherever we are, the Lord is with us. But there is a special anointing. There's a special work of the Holy Spirit when we come together to worship the Lord in Jesus' name. There is a blessing when we come together. Claire, I couldn't help but to think. There's been times that we've been in this church singing, How Great Is Our God. When my hair, and I haven't been able to get a haircut, my lady, the lady who does my hair, she uh, texts me the other day and says she has uh, the virus. So she'll be back to work in two weeks, so I might look like Trudy. No, I, I mean as a man. I didn't mean it that way. I meant as long hair. Sorry. We better go back to video and have it. Love you, Trudy. Isn't it fun? How great is our God. How great. And there's been times when we have gathered here in worship that some songs have just made your hair stand right up. You have sensed the presence of God. I can sense God's presence in my home, around my garden, out through the woods. But there's something about the church that when we gather is very special. God anoints. You think about it. Slide number six. Look at uh, David's heart. And, and one thing, Psalms 27, I ask from the Lord. One thing. Listen to the heart of, of, of a man that really wants to worship or a woman. One thing that I ask of the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him where? In his temple. I mean, this is a desire, I think, that we should have. That I want to be here. I want, you know, driving down 17 this morning, coming to church. I was excited. A little apprehensive because didn't know what to expect. But it's so good to be back. One thing I've desired, Lord, is to be in your house with your people. To worship you. To seek you. To inquire of you. What a great blessing that is. Number seven, capturing the heart of Psalms 87. I believe when you get in uh, Psalms 84, when you and I get in Psalms 84, you just hear the, the worship leaders, you hear David that had a heart for the Lord and loved him. And he says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. How lovely. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart yearns, it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out. For the living God. Look at number eight. 
the courts of the Lord is more than a place. This building is more than a place. This has been dedicated to the poor for his holy purposes to serve him. We can have church at the farm. We can have church in your backyard. But this place has been dedicated to serve the living God, to exalt Christ, and to minister to people, to meet them where they're at with the good news of Christ. This building is not what's important. Yes, it's dedicated. But what takes place within these walls, within our hearts, I believe that's as the believers were going up and down those dirty roads all the way to Jerusalem, their heart was set. We want to get to the house of the Lord. We want to worship. We want to pray. We want to hear the word. We want to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. And there they were. They had this anticipation. We want to be in the courts of the Lord. We want to be where God is. When you think about the Old Testament and how God worked in that tabernacle, the very presence of God would come down upon that tabernacle. Exodus 33 is a great study of how God's presence came down upon the tabernacle when Israel had the tabernacle and all the tribes were around. The center was the tabernacle. Their lives were built around that and they focused. And when Moses went into that tabernacle, the very presence of God would come down. And they would each would stand in their tents and watch as Moses would interact with God face to face as a friend with his friend. We know in the New Testament on the day of Pentecost how the Holy Spirit came down upon the gathered believers and that changed the whole life of the beginning and birth of the church. And here we are today. The courts of God is about his presence and his working. It's not about a place. If that makes sense. Even the sparrow Number nine, Daniel, even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow, a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They're ever praising you. I don't know about you. This should be home for the Christian. But we gather to regroup, to refocus. Life is real. A lot's been thrown at every one of us. We all have different battles in life, different struggles, weaknesses, vulnerabilities. Even the sparrow has found a home, a refuge, a quiet place, a sanctuary. And may this always be that for everybody who comes. A home where you know you're welcome. Where you know that you found some, find support, you belong, and you're a part of the family of God. Number 10, blessed are those whose strength is in you, Lord, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Lord, this is our desire. This is where we want to be. And we're making our way to you. We're making our way to your house. We're making a way that, Lord, that we are set in our heart. We are set on getting closer to you. They pass through the valley of Baca. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. What is Baca? It's a place of sorrow and of weeping and of sadness. It's a place that's hard. It's a place where everything hits you right in the face. And you don't know if you're going to make it. There's pain. There's suffering. Blessed are those whose strength comes from God. As they set their heart, even in the midst of strife, in, even in the midst of, of heartache, even in the midst of struggles, they set their hearts on pilgrimage. This is where I need to be. This is where I'm going because I need to be there. I need to regain, regroup, and to refocus. 
I need the Lord's help in my life as I pass through those hard places and they make it a place of springs and they go from strength to strength. I want to tell you, and I'll make this real personal. Frank Jack, 97 years old. What do you think that man's gone through in his 97 years? From strength to strength. His life's been real. But I was thinking this morning how God has got him through it all. And he's still going. From strength to strength. Don't you love that verse? God gave me strength yesterday. I was doing some struggling. But he'll give us strength today and he'll give us strength tomorrow. To the day that he calls us home. Amen. Number 12. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O oh God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Lord, the cry of the heart. We need your help. Number 13. Better is one day in thy courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. I want to tell you, there should be nothing more valuable to you and I than our time in God's house, in worship, in seeking him, in inquiring of him to feel his presence and to be strengthened. Number 14, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is upright. Nobody can bless you any more than our living God. The blessings that he gives. The Lord God is a sun, a shield. He bestows favor. He bestows honor. No good thing does God withhold from those whose walk is right. I love that verse. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. For our closing today, number 16, Daniel. Life throws so much at us. Many of our situation, our dilemma, we never planned it. Let me ask you, do you plan your adversity? I don't. Many times our situations, our dilemmas catch us off guard. Whoever would have thought last year when we were celebrating Christmas in December, New Year's Eve, we're getting excited for a new year, that we would ever be faced with the pandemic. And then on top of the pandemic, then this thing that happened in Minneapolis, where are we headed? Many of our situations, our dilemmas, catch us off guard. It's like an ambush and they overtake us. We have personal battles. We have vulnerabilities. The old saying, before we know it, we find ourselves in a pickle. And I don't know about you. I long for the courts of God. For his presence, his working, for his help, his strength. And his encouragement. Number 17. We as individuals and families and communities and states as a nation. I believe more than any time ever we need to get back to the house of God. Amen. To his courts. To prayer. To worship. And time in the word. And I believe that as we get back as a nation, as we get back as a people to the house of God with a heart that's set on pilgrimage, that we are seeking God with everything that we've got, that we are opening our hearts and allowing the spirit of God to work, that we're here with intent, we're here with a purpose, that we're here to serve the living God and to be a witness as we go out of these doors where the vertical impacts the horizontal situations. How lovely is your dwelling place, O oh Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for our time in your house today. But most of all, we pray for your residence within our hearts and lives and your working in each of our situations. And Father, I pray that you will custom fit this to every heart. And that we will take what you want, each one of us, to add that we can grow in grace and knowledge of you, our Lord. 
We thank you so much. And Father, as this goes out, I pray that you will touch and use it to bless many people. And may churches all across America be strengthened by your grace, by your Holy Spirit, and all around the world. And thank you for Christians that are willing to take a stand. Those that are paying the price for Christ. And Father, we pray for those that don't know you, that are lost. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day and the gift of life. And Father, as we go to our homes and our places of work, and we pray all across this land for divine protection, we pray about the virus. We pray that there will not be uh, upheaval. We just pray that you will keep it in check and help us all to do what we can to do our part, to respect one another, to be safe, and to do all the practicing of social distancing and washing our hands and everything. But most of all, the greatest cleansing of all is through Christ our Lord and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Anoint your people as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.